Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today, I'm very happy to have Diane Wairadu, who is a brand message strategist. She's the founder of Lion Words. She's fluent in four languages. Uh, she's all over the place talking about voice of customer document copywriting. I'm so excited to have you on today. How are you, Diane? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. You know, having a ending a, a big day, it feels like Friday, but it's only Wednesday, I think. <laughs> yeah. Every day is Friday, though, when you run your own business, right? Or Monday? Which yeah. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, I think every day is either Monday or Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Um, take every day as it comes. But it's been one of those days that's been exciting and uh, semi-stressful, but, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, I know the feeling. So you are also a very busy person. You said you're having a very crazy day. Uh, what do you have going on these days in the world of brand strategy and your life? Yeah, oh, that's a big question. I have lots <laughs> going on. So let me see how I can reduce this. So yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a conversion copywriter and a brand message strategist. So you know, with that, kind of my work is often split into two pieces. So with the brand messaging strategy process, I generally help businesses kind of really get clarity on their messaging, you know, and their positioning and help them articulate their value, which then sets the foundation for really effective copy. And then with the copywriting process, I have like a really research driven uh, process um, and it's conversion focused um, and I work primarily with like SaaS and B2B companies so I'm actually at the moment wrapping up two pretty big um, brand message strategy projects so that's been really exciting um, so we have a lot of consulting and strategy at the beginning and then we kind of dig in and talk to their customers and make sure that their messaging is aligned with what their customers are saying um, and so yeah I'm just wrapping those up now so busy month for me too. Cool so what does that look like actually when you do a brand messaging strategy, what does what's the final result of a brand messaging strategy? Who does that go to? How do they use it? Yeah, that's a great question. So what I do, if we like, like if we start with the deliverable, right? Because obviously I, I think that the value is also in the process and not just what you walk away with, obviously. Um, and a lot of the the, the big insights come from actually just going through and walking through the process, but what they walk away with is a brand message uh, playbook. And so okay. that brand message playbook covers everything from internal brand messages to external brand messages. And then also when I do a really in-depth one, then also a kind of competitor and market analysis as well. So, you know, this is your kind of classic your mission and your vision and your values and everything that, you know, the brand purpose, and then also the kind of external, really kind of optimized sales messages and your elevator pitch, but then also taking into consideration um, how your customers are speaking about you and what messages are out in the market and so how you can actually differentiate yourself. So mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a really fun process. Um, and I think and it's and it's interesting to see because often clients have one thing in mind when we speak at the beginning and it's interesting to see how that shifts um, as we work through the process. When you say internal brand messaging, is that how you speak about your brand to the employees or what is what is that? Yeah, so I use, I mean, I use internal, so maybe I'm getting lost in my own language there, but I, I always think of um, brand messaging is kind of like the backbone of marketing. Do you know what I mean? So if you think that obviously a business exists fundamentally based on words, like without words, a business just can't exist. So the message strategy, I think, is like at the core of what any business is. Yeah. And so things like your, your vision or the brand purpose aren't really messages that you're going to slap on your homepage because it doesn't really resonate with the customer. It's not the language that the customer speaks, but you need to have those core messages to align everyone internally on the team. And so that everyone knows, hey, what are we working towards? What are we making decisions yeah. based around? So I look at those as internal messages, like just as a kind of umbrella term. It sounds a bit like core values. Yeah. And I mean, core values is one of the things that I work on as well with my clients. And it's one of the most 
my, one of the most fun parts of the process. Um, and I think that because core values get a really bad rep, I think <laughs> people, you know, and it's because we see customer, we see companies using like integrity and empathy <laughs> and honesty. And it's like, well, obviously I don't want to you yeah. know, work with a company that's not honest. Um, but really they're kind of, I look at them as like the guiding principles behind um, the brand. And so it's really fun to dig into, well, what, do you actually believe in on a day-to-day -day basis because mm -hmm. everyone shows up to work um and to stand to take a stand against something you know um and so they can be really powerful when they're thought about correctly and used in the right way instead of just slapping pretentious words yeah. on the website you know <laughs> so so when you do this brand messaging because it sounds like it goes a lot far beyond just marketing because it becomes the company's culture in a way too right doesn't it drive the decisions Shouldn't it be the guiding light for decisions everybody's making in the company, this kind of strategic brand messaging in a way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. And I think that, you know, my role as a kind of strategist and consultant, some of the work is helping guide and shape and make sure that they're making the right decision. But essentially, companies have this information, right? You know, I'm not yeah. telling you what your vision is. I'm just helping you extract that. Yeah. And put it into um, words that are actually going to help you achieve your goal. I, I was actually, it's funny that we're talking about this because just about one hour ago, I was in a core values workshop. Ooh, um, exciting. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The process that they were taking us through for us to discover what our core values were. Um, and it's like identifying a bunch of different keywords, grouping them together in terms of themes to try to get into some main core values. And one thing that she told us uh, to do was don't make your core value one word. So don't make it kindness because anybody could be like, oh yeah, you know, I interpret kindness this way, whatever. It should be some kind of sentence that you can directly measure against. So be kind to other people, uh, right. for example. Um, how do you how do you navigate these kind of like, what does a... a some final core values look like to you? Yeah, and I, I think that that's a really great tip. And one of the projects that I was just working on, they're all similar sentences like this as well, because it, I think it aligns better with um, the, the company that I'm working with. It's a software development company. Um, and they're really kind of, they're really quite edgy and just anti BS, anti corporate, right? And so that fits with them. But I wouldn't, I don't really have any hard and fast rules. I think that that's one of the important things about branding and messaging is yeah. that if you try and follow, you know, templates and frameworks to the T, then sometimes you can lose out on something that might suit you better. So for another client, the, the idea of using simple words fit them better because actually also aligned, it's a bit meta really, but it also aligned with their brand voice and their brand voice is very short, choppy, direct, yeah, uh, they have a very young audience. And so that's that's what their values make sense as, you know, like you're using really short words. Yeah. So you can use strategies, but I also think sometimes that when the rules are there, also break them sometimes. <laughs> Why not? I like that. Yeah. And you mentioned as well, so all of this stuff is to be used internally. And then the way that you present your message externally. Uh I know that um you do a lot of work and you talk a lot about voice of the customer. So yeah. how does that tie in to this brand messaging work that you do internally? Yeah, the I, I do bang on a lot about voice of customer because it's just such an, it's such an important part of, you know, any company's messaging or copy. And I think it's often really either undervalued, underused, or just also not really, you know, not understood. Um, and so, you know, the way that I use it is that, you know, the voice of customer is essentially just how your customer or your client thinks or feels about your product or your service and how they talk about you. And when that doesn't align with the way that you talk about the business, then you just end up with this massive disconnect. So for every single project that I do, um, whether it is that kind of in-depth brand um, strategy or whether it's uh, going into, you know, a full blown uh, copywriting project, if you're writing a landing page or whatever, um, they'll have different goals, but I will always do some form of mm -hmm. customer research. And so that could be um, 
customer interview, so getting on the phone with your customers, or it could be sending out a survey and then looking at the responses, or it could be if you don't have the resources or the time or even the customers, which hasn't been my case, but for some people it, it could be then using like online reviews to actually look through and find yeah. how similar customers are speaking. Um, so yeah, so there's always that process of going, looking for the messaging, how they talk about their problems, their hesitations, um, you know, the big picture benefits, um, all of that kind of really useful language around your product and service so that then you can make sure whatever output, whatever copy you write, it aligns so that, you know, you, you actually deliver more value. So how do you put that into an actionable document? You go and do this research, you talk to their customers. Uh, if they don't have customers, you go look at online reviews. When you take all of this data, what does it look like after? So... I'm a big fan of a spreadsheet. <laughs> so yeah. most people won't be, you know, you think you, you come to work in copy and messaging and then I end up spending half of my day in spreadsheets, but you can't get better than a spreadsheet. So I've created my own templates um, and depending on the project. So I have one template that's much more useful for the brand message strategy. Um, it's a little bit cleaner and it's a little bit easier to digest. And then when I'm actually working on a copywriting project, then I have another voice of customer template. Um, and so I pull the messages out. So after I have um, an, an interview or after I'm when I'm going through a customer survey, I put the messages into like buckets um, and I split them into four areas. So I'm gonna look for um, the struggles or the pain um, so anything that the customer is saying about, you know, the before, like the pain that they had, what they were going and looking for. Um, so I'll put that in one column or one category. And then I also have the kind of objections and the hesitations, because that really helps us know what we need, we, what we need to overcome in the message as well. Yeah. And then I also look for the, um, the needs, like the thing that we want to fix and then the outcome. So yeah, so I have a, a template that essentially I just copy paste, drag them in, sort them, and then analyze the data that way. And then at the end of that, I have what I call a messaging hierarchy. Um, so I can see which messages and which points came up most often. And then I know what to prioritize when it okay. comes to the message. So this is a template that perhaps you're gonna share with all of us. Yes. Yeah. If you want access, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do have, um, I have, yeah, you can download my voice of customer uh, template. And I also have um, a kind of cheat sheet of questions as well to ask in an interview or in a survey, because just going in cold and not knowing what to ask or how to start is just like a recipe for disaster. So I created yeah. this cheat sheet of questions for myself. So I know what order to work through. Um, yeah. So I'll share, uh, I guess, in the show notes or in the link yes. with you. Yeah. So I'll share that with you. Send so, it to okay. me after everybody who's listening. You'll have it in the show notes. Definitely. I'm also going to sign up, download yeah. that because <laughs> that sounds really good. And so, it's great. Actually, I was on a, I was on a call this morning with um, a, a potential client who's using my template and it's just so great to see that that's, that's how he's kind of pulled all of his data. So that's really helpful. It's amazing to see that. Well, it's amazing to see that your work is helping people and then um, that it's providing value for them. And then they want to work with you more because of that value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you just kind of put stuff out there. I think often as well as a business, you don't realize I'm just creating things all the time, <laughs> creating yeah. things to make my life easier. So it's nice to share and actually help everyone else with the same process. Yeah. So speaking about your newsletter, because you mentioned it earlier, uh, you said in your newsletter recently, I've come to realize that stage of awareness is the single most important part of copywriting. And if you don't match it or prioritize it, you're right royally rogered. <laughs> so let's yeah, talk about that. That's my style of writing. Don't sign up for my newsletter if you like it. <laughs> tell, tell, us, tell us about this stage of awareness. How do you identify it? How do you make sure that your copy um, is hitting the right place? Yeah, so this, so the reason I got to this is because often, you know, copywriters get asked, oh, okay, so what, what is copywriting? And then you have these kind of boilerplate answers that, you know, okay, well, it's selling with words or it's persuasion with words. And obviously with any copy, the whole point is driving someone to take an action, right? It's true. Everything yeah. that we do, 
we know this, right? You want someone to uh, sign up to your newsletter or, you know, book a demo, et cetera. But when I always think when we're kind of chasing that end conversion, and, you know, this is coming from a conversion copywriter, that we just lose sight of what's the most important. And I think that the most important thing is actually helping someone have a realization. And when someone has a realization or we're kind of looking for that aha moment, you know, and that's either, yeah. oh yeah, this is right for me. Oh yeah, you know, I should use, um, you know, I can lose weight without a diet or whatever it is. It's just a realization that we're after. Um, and I always, so I think that the best way to look at this is through um, the stages of awareness, which were, um, you know, created or first talked about by Eugene Schwartz. So in his book, uh, Breakthrough Advertising, he talks about five uh, stages of awareness you're from completely unaware to pain or problem aware um, to then solution aware product aware and then most aware and essentially in any copy you're just moving someone to the next stage of awareness yeah. so you just want someone to leave having had a realization and then eventually that realization will lead to okay well either signing up to something if it is right for me um, so I always prior prioritize this in you know anything that I do so how do you figure out what stage of awareness the person reading the piece is at? Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a tricky one to explain. Um, but just when you know the ecosystem of your offer or where your traffic is coming from and who you're targeting and how um, how long your product has been in the market, then it's quite easy to decipher. For example, I mean, let's have a look at, let's talk about your business, for example. Okay. So if I was gonna ask you, you know, so for Flying Cat Marketing, um, you know, how are most of your prospects finding you? Most of them from LinkedIn. Okay, so LinkedIn. So when they get, most people get in touch, what's the kind of thing that they, they get in touch about? Do they, do they know about, they know they have a problem, um, are they really unsure about what steps to take? What kind of language are they using when they get in touch with you? A lot of them are saying, I want to scale SEO for my startup. Uh, I've seen a few posts that you have written. It's usually after I publish something, some kind of blog post, then they get in touch with me. Lately, I've been getting a few more leads, all of them saying the same thing. I want to scale SEO. Okay, great. So often, so there we can see that um they're talking about like this need and this bigger picture outcome but we can probably pair that back and think well if you want to scale it's because you're experiencing some friction when you want some growth um there's also something deeper behind that yeah but they already know that they have like a goal in mind so there's a pain or a problem that they want to overcome they're aware of you so actually you have a lot of like inbound people coming to find you so it already seems like they're at that solution aware they know that you can yeah. help them with their problem and they're already aware of who you are so they we're, we're moving okay. into like the product aware stage because they know what services you offer and now you just need to say how your solution is the right thing for them and so you're kind of at that you know what I mean it's quite easy yeah. to work out when you just look at um, how people are interacting with you what kind of pain the language they use um, and where you need to take them to it's like how much work do you need okay. to, do to get someone to the sale yeah. I love this. So that means, so let's say in the context of conversion copywriting. So let's say I have this lead who's told me this information. They've, they're already aware of me, they're already product aware. So in terms of conversion copywriting, does that mean I'm writing a case study for this particular person or a landing page? Or what is it that I'm actually writing for this stage of awareness? Yeah, interesting question. I mean, it I think that the, the mechanics or the format, it, it doesn't really matter. That will depend completely on, um, you know, your service or your product. So it, it's, it's not really about the format in which it's presented. It's just the way that you, the way that you write and yeah. the things that you cover. Because someone, it's like, for example, when we look at, so let's look at the complete opposite ends of the spectrum uh, unaware that someone who doesn't even know they have a problem at all they're not they don't even think there's they need any solution someone who is completely happy and at the most aware stage that's like you know you know you need an iphone you you're just waiting for the price to drop and then you're going to buy you yeah. are the highest tension so you don't need any information um and so it's not really about, you know, where you would write this. It's just what kind of information you would include. So, you know, when someone's landing on, uh, let's say, an e-commerce site, for example, perhaps it's the offer when someone is the most aware and that's all they need. Um, but when you're in a market where your product is really new um, and, you know, you don't have a really loyal fan base, for example, then perhaps your messaging, you need to do a lot of educating with that. Yeah. 
move them through to the next stage. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I can also, it makes a lot of sense in terms of SEO um, because it's, it's also pretty clear to identify what stage of awareness somebody is at based on the search intent of the keyword. Um, so there you can see, take people down the funnel and say, okay, they've come to this, then I'm going to nurture them for a while. Uh, and then you can, they'll start finding the pieces that are further along in the funnel. Um, exactly. I mean, that's what a lot of the work that you do obviously as well, you know, with content strategy and a lot of what you're doing is just helping people, um, come to a realization yeah. that, you know, that either there is an issue or they can overcome it, or there's some solutions to a problem that they have. And then after that realization, and then they go start looking for more content that can help them with their problem. Yeah, it's that actually introducing a narrative, introducing exactly. that, uh, like you said earlier, the aha moment mm -hmm. that uh, this is possible. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone who's listening to the podcast and not the video, it's just imagine a light bulb. Popping <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Over my head. Diana's pointing to a light bulb over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I find it fascinating. Really? Yeah, I love, I mean, it all comes down to, because we can use all these fancy words and, you know, stage of awareness, but it just comes down to um, human behavior and our psychology and how we, how we think as well. And, you know, sometimes I think that when we talk about copy or content strategy or everything, you know, brand messaging, sometimes we can get lost, but I do really want to kind of hammer home the point to anyone thinking to anyone listening that you know it just comes down to just being a human <laughs> just yeah. listening to customers and clients and listening to what they want what the problems they're having and what you can do and say to help them um you know overcome that problem and that's all it is it's like you know customer interviews I don't call them interviews I just call them a chat um because interviews are horrible <laughs> no one wants to get on an interview and actually all it is is a chat I'm just listening yeah uh, to a customer talk about um you know what what they think uh, and that's it really I, I think that the key to this that uh a lot of people miss is in these interviews and like telling them how you can help them is really how you help them in their specific problem based on what they've told you. Like, don't just say, Hey, I'm going to help you make more money. That's not telling you how you can help them because all that does is show that you didn't listen to them. But the key is saying, how can I make this about that person while somehow tying in my my brand narrative in it, right? I guess that's what your power as a conversion copywriter is, is to know how to balance those things. Yeah, because really what you're helping someone do, like if, you, if we take this example, like you said about, you know, money, that's just the first layer, isn't it? It's like, what does that actually allow someone to do? Like, how are you helping? Every, all of us, we have a product or a service that changes people's lives in some way or another and essentially we're just helping people um you know with the right message realize that they actually can do that so to wrap things up do you have any tips five no maybe five is too many <laughs> <laughs> hang on tell me tell Wait. me what the tip you want me to do first before you tell me how many and then I'll tell you how many <laughs> <laughs> um, just conversion copywriting. Uh, you know, I can tell people how to do copywriting for ranking on search engines. What's your top tips um, to make your landing page or your, your website more convertible? If that's not the right, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, convert higher, right? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a really good question. And I already, I don't know if um, I'm going to give you the answer that you expect, but the first things that come to mind are just being conversational and speaking, like writing, like people speak is the first one. Um, you know, I work with um, SaaS brands and a lot of what I do is just cutting the jargon and cutting fluff that doesn't mean anything. So you know, if you wouldn't say it in real life, you wouldn't want to, if you wouldn't say it out loud, just take a step back and revisit it. So <laughs> the first one, like, that's the first one. Um, and that, I think that closely ties into 
um, clarity. I think that the biggest thing, my number one tip is just editing for clarity. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than leaving people, the only thing worse than leaving people bored is leaving people confused. Yeah. <laughs> and so if anyone could possibly be confused and behind your message, then revisit and, and edit that. Um, and then I think, yeah, just putting your putting your customers first. Again, they're not really tangible tips, but I think that these are the most valuable things to hear because we can really get lost in the, the language and yeah. language doesn't work like that. I'm not going to say, hey, start your sentence with a verb. Okay, that could work, but really just put your customers first and forget about your product and forget about your service and focus on what they need to hear um, and the bigger picture benefits. So, you know, go with really benefit um, driven messaging and put your customer at the forefront I love that I would give the same tips for SEO Yay. as well <laughs> um, amazing I guess we're on to something maybe yeah I think so mm -hmm. uh, so Diane this has been such a pleasure um, and if everybody else wants the honor um, and pleasure to follow you and keep talking to you uh, well, I'm just going to say you're super active on LinkedIn. Everybody should follow Diane on LinkedIn. She posts amazing content. I learn a lot from following her. Uh, but where else can people uh, make the most of what you make? Of what you oh, well, firstly, thank you. You're also very active on LinkedIn. <laughs> I love it. So I definitely hang out mostly on LinkedIn. So yeah, come and find me there, follow, but also, you know, connect with me as well. But personalize your connection request, please, because just... I like to use it as an actual connection platform, you know, so I will chat with you. So just write me a message and then we can start a conversation. So that would be really cool to get to know everyone. Um, you can also visit my website, of course, if you want to get in touch or know anything else about, you know, my brand message um, process or copywriting. So that's lionwords.com. Um, or I think we'll drop a link somewhere for you to sign up for my newsletter if you want me in your yes. inbox. Yes. 100%. We will be dropping the link for the newsletter and for uh, those templates that you mentioned, which I think maybe end up leading to the newsletter as well. They do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so if you grab, if you want to grab the customer interview questions so to help you with um, your customer interviews and your surveys, then you will always get the newsletter anyway. So Amazing. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Mother. Yeah. And for who anybody uh, who was watching or listening this to this, please do like it, share with your friends and colleagues and uh, go and follow Diane. Thank you so much for watching or listening and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks again. Ah!